Ladies and gentlemen, this morning's Walk of Fame ceremony is presented by the Hollywood Historic Trust and the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce. And today we honor the Dean of Hollywood Commerce, a man who not only wrote about Hollywood, but is a part of Hollywood. Today we honor the one and only, the incomparable Jim Bacon. This time. Hello, Tiger. <laughs> this one is a call of attention. Okay. We're going to have some very interesting speakers this morning. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce the president of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce for a brief welcome, Mr. Leron Googler. Give him a nice big hand. Johnny Grant. You know, there's a, only a select group of columnists who have stars in the Walk of Fame. I thought I'd share their names with you today. Uh, Hedda Hopper, Erskine Johnson, Jimmy Fiedler, Luella Parsons, Sidler. I said that wrong. Fiddler. I didn't say that wrong. Fiddler, Jimmy Fiddler, and Luella Parsons, Arnie Archer, and Bob Thomas. And today we're delighted to add another to that roster, James Bacon. So on behalf of us at the Chamber, congratulations to him on receiving the 2,334th star of the Hollywood Hall of Fame. As you can see, this is going to be a very loose ceremony today. More like a telephone. We're going to have fun. Uh, let me tell you about this man we honor today. In a career stretching back 70 years, Jim Bacon, who turns 93 on May 12th, has, listen to this now, has smoked cigars with Winston Churchill, battered with presidents from Franklin Delano Roosevelt to John F. Kennedy and George Herbert Walker Bush, and met with the current president when he was at Poplar. As a young Associated Press reporter in Chicago, Bacon dined nightly at a restaurant with members of the Capone gang <laughs> and kept quiet about what he heard there. And uh, he, he, he kept quiet about the secret upright lives their wives and children led under assumed names in Chicago suburban mansions. Later, as a reporter columnist for the AP and for the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, Bacon hung out in the wee hours with Frank Sinatra, from the Pyramids of Egypt to backstage Las Vegas, from Princess Grace's Monaco Palace to the clamoring crowd of 200,000 fans in the stadium in uh, uh, Rio de Janeiro. Traded jokes in military helicopters over the Alaskan glaciers and fudged on golf scores in Hope's backyard course and his fame to Palm Springs for it. He played in that. Yes, remember Sidney? Now, Jim caught the golden age of Hollywood when the Associated Press transferred him from the Chicago Bureau in 1948. His lively writing style had attracted the eye of AP executive Alan J. Gold. With the wind and drinking habits that we do this each day, one of our favorite watering holes was right in there, which is now a sandwich shop, but that was the It Cafe owned by Clara Bowman. And that was right in there, right in this hotel, and that was one of the liveliest bars in this town especially when Bacon came in. <laughs> the story started with Jim Gunn. And in 1966, uh, he, uh, for a brief stint, he uh, left the AP and became a Hollywood press agent with the publicity powerhouse of Roger B. Howard and that's the report. And in 1968, he joined Hearst Los Angeles Herald Examiner, for which he wrote a Hollywood column for 18 years. Now, he authored two books of memories in the 1970s, both the best sellers. I love those titles. Hollywood is a four-letter town. 
And uh, I am very proud to bring her up here right now. Uh, as a matter of fact, we had a ceremony down here not too long ago for the producer of her show, Police Woman. That makes me want to take the law into my own hands. <laughs> And uh, have tried a few times, but didn't do very well. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only, a great friend of them, Angie Dickens. get started in the business, we don't know where it's going to lead, and, and we don't know what helped us get to where we are now or whenever, and Jim was that way. One little plant might have meant all the difference, and of course we never know uh, for sure, but I know for sure that he helped me in my career and in my life, and I love him very, very much, and congratulations, Jim. You belong here. continues with a representative from the city of Los Angeles. Anybody who knows the city of LA better than he does. Would you please welcome council member Tom Laban. Right here. Good morning everybody. Let's give Johnny Grant a big hand. A big hand. Johnny, this is special. I bring greetings from my, my colleague, Eric Garcetti, the president of city council. It's just, uh, I'm in now, I'm off just the other side of Yucca. But I come here today for James Bacon. I also bring greetings from Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa. And I love everybody's got a story about James Bacon. So I got a story, Johnny, because I met my wife, uh, James Bacon, at 6907 Lancashire Boulevard. You know where that was, A.C. Lyles? The Palomino Club. Oh, the Palomino Club. And uh, it's not like today where there's 600 channels of television and all these networks. There was just a few people with the power of the pin. And James Bacon had that power and he helped people know about who was doing great things. So James, I'm here today for you on behalf of Mayor Miragosa. Ah. And you know, Johnny, you're going to see these officials come out now and you think back, you knew them when they wore saddles to and long hair, and we try to top each other. So he just brought you a proclamation. I, as mayor of Hollywood, do hereby proclaim this James Bacon Day in Hollywood. but with one stipulation. He says, I gotta be next to my buddy, Frank Sinatra. So you will find that when we unveil the story, Frank Sinatra Jr. Ladies and gentlemen. powerful is he as a man of this media? This is one of the handful of people, you can count them on the fingers of one hand, who actually was permitted to speak to Howard Hughes when Howard Hughes was the invisible man. But what was the man like himself? I decided today I was going to recount something that happened many years ago, way over 30 years ago at Lake Tahoe, California at which point there was a show of Frank Sinatra along with my sister Nancy and myself. The first time that it ever happened. Opening night, the preparations, everybody was ecstatic. It was such a wonderful situation. And when it was all over, we all went to our rooms and collapsed into itsy bitsy pieces. That first night, the strain was gone, all the show was open, everything was going to be fine. 
So I'm in my bunk trying to sleep, and it's 2.30 in the morning, and my telephone rings. It is the Department of Security at Harris Casino Hotel at Lake Tahoe. Uh, sir, we're sorry to uh, bother you just now, but uh, there's some activity um, downstairs in the dressing room. Uh, we don't know if anybody's supposed to be there. Uh, perhaps you better come down. You're the only one we could find. So now I got to get up, get my clothes on, and I go down under the showroom into the basement where the dressing rooms are. I go walking down the hall with a uniformed security officer, and I get to the open door of the star's dressing room. And I begin to hear voices, and he stops me. The security agent says, well, we can't go in until the chief shows up. So I'm listening. Now, I had been in that dressing room, and the act that had played there before us had some small children. And I remember seeing a checkerboard and checkers sitting on a table in the dressing room. And as we approach the room over listening, all of a sudden I hear Jim Bacon say, hey, let's play checkers. <laughs> and the other voice that I made is the voice of Frank Sinatra. He says, you're putting me on. He says, come on, man. I'm going to beat you three games straight. Let's play checkers. And I said, this doesn't sound right. We go back to the security office. A couple of moments later, the chief of security comes down. We go walking back to the dressing room, and as we approach the door, I hear Sinatra at the top of his lungs. You move, and it wasn't your turn. <laughs> then I hear this man here saying, I did not, you dumb dago. <laughs> but at that moment, we opened the door, walked in, and Sinatra's got the checkerboard <laughs> right over his head. Checkers are flying, we're ducking. <laughs> Things are flying, and he says, it was afraid I almost knocked the bottle over. <laughs> and the chief of security now is standing there next to me like this. <laughs> and finally, he says, do you know these guys? And I said, uh, yeah. And I said, that's uh, Sinatra and his drinking buddy, Jim Bacon. At that moment, the Irish contingency, a little red-eyed, looked up and said, who invited you guys? Get out of here. Can't you see we're playing the checkers? <laughs> Congratulations. Well, don't you wish you had lived back in those days? Yes. Yeah. I wish we had time. I'll tell you a story he pulled on me, but I haven't got time. Because I've got one of the funniest. You know, if you ever go anywhere and see this man's name on the marquee, you you definitely want to go in because you will be royally entertained. And if there's any casting directors here, you can just look at that face of his and know that there is a talent that can play any role you can get. And you know I'm talking about the one and only, ladies and gentlemen, Jim Conway. Thank you very much. You'll notice I'm a nightclub entertainer. Here it is. Uh, it is a great day. I am frankly a little disappointed. Uh, I thought this was a pilot. <laughs> to come here and honor somebody is a little, you know, kind of uncomfortable. I've, uh, I've known Jim for as long as I've been out here, which is 46 years. Uh, Jim has been around here practically a century. Um, I used to have a golf tournament out at Westlake. They had it for 25 years. And Jim played in that golf tournament every year. We never asked him. <laughs> he would show up and say, hey, I got my own shoes. Can I? So we let him play. I don't know how many are aware of it, but Jim made a choice between being a writer and a professional golfer. He really loved both of them. Uh, there was only really one thing that uh, held Jim back as far as becoming a professional golfer. His game stinks. <laughs> Jim has the same motion in golf 
as a guy who's raking leaves. <laughs> but uh, I remember one year Jim uh, got up to the tee. I, I used to like to talk to the guys, especially at the top of their backswing, because it helped them uh, when they came here. <laughs> Jim was the only guy in 25 years that we had that tournament that actually hit the ball on the tee and it went behind it. <laughs> we are still trying to figure that out. As you know, uh, Jim is Irish, and uh, the Irish drink a bit, I think you know that. Uh, as a matter of fact, Jim was 12 years old before he found out that all brown paper bags didn't have a bottle of Seagrams in it. You know? <laughs> That's how the family went, you know? Um, he also, you know, in growing up through these, we grew up through the best times of television and through uh, show business, you know? And, uh, I've known Jim for, as I said, about 45 years. Jim has the kindest pen in Hollywood. There is no poison in Jim's pen. He has written about people, about the history of Hollywood. Thank God. It was actually canceled while it was on the air. It started in Hollywood and it, it came across the country. It was being canceled. That's the God's truth. It's in, uh, uh, believe it or not, Ripley's Believe It or Not. It's a show called Turn On. And Jim wrote a... Jim, you're going to tell us a few stories? You got to, my man. Uh, you don't have time, don't you? I, I got, I, we get, now, the, the, the thing concludes with Jim, Frank, Dean, Sammy, I mean, I had a big box of them. They had the, they had the, the, furnace, uh, the uh, fireplace going, the heat is flowing, and we're all sitting back on the other side of the room I don't think I've ever enjoyed doing a star for anybody anymore. Well, I did like Halle Berry the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she gave me a, a little hug, Jim, to give them the truth. And that second hug, she said, we'll give that to the truth. So I said, that one was so good, I'm going to keep it for me. Uh, but. Uh, I, I, I really have enjoyed this one. I can tell by the faces out there, they're enjoying knowing all about you more than they might have known before. He is truly a part of Hollywood. Hollywood legend. It is his day in Hollywood. Give him that kind of welcome, James Bacon. Some people say I don't deserve this honor, but I don't deserve diabetes either. But I got it. <laughs> I'm very honored to be on Vine Street because it's a historic street. The parking lot there, the first Hollywood feature was made by Cecil B. the Mill, the Squall Man. And uh, in this hotel, Joe Frisco, the greatest wit in the history of Hollywood, used to live. I remember one day I was going in the Brown Derby over there, and Joe Frisco came out here and says, Hey, 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 Jim, can you let me have 20 bucks till Amelia Earhart gets back from her trip? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm right here next to Frank Sinatra. So happy Frank Sinatra Jr. showed up. I go way back with Frank. I first met him in 1939 when he was singing with Harry James Orchestra. Betty Grable and I went to college in at the Hotel Sherman. And uh, this I played golf with these guys. I had a four and three on a hole. James comes up and makes me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy Murphy. Jimmy Murphy. Veil the star 
And if you think Jim and I are going to get on our knees, you're crazy. Because it would take two hours for us to get up, and we don't want to hold you that long. So we'll go down now and unveil a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Did we mention Vernon Scott today? He was part of that Rat Pack, no. too. Thank you. Have a good day. RJ? Yeah. RJ? Yes. You and I have a mutual friend. 
Oh, oh yes, oh, yeah. yeah. My, my niece. Yes. Hi, so, how do you do? Let's go picture. How are you? You know, you know that I was uh, got on the board yesterday. The mayor was there. You know, Joe does the mayor. Oh, he does. Yeah. So I said we have a friend in common. He stopped and <laughs> talked to me. You still go there? Uh, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. And ready? Yep. Right. Tell me you have some name from the Sure, Marilyn Monroe. Sure. Good to see you. You're looking great. Things are well? You're looking better than ever. You're like wine. You get better with age. Hello, how are you? Hey, how are you? Nice right. to see you. God bless you. Welcome to Paramount. Happy, happy Easter. We're nice here for my good friend Jim Bacon. Wow. Who is a part of Paramount, as much a part of Paramount as Hollywood and Vine here. And it's always good to see all these people. And my good friends, Robert Wagner, is up here. Angie Dickinson. Angie was here. And just, just. And he's next to his friend Frank Sinatra. That's good. And all of us love Frank. We love, we love Jim. Thank you so much. Thank you. Man. Happy Easter. Thank you. you do well, well. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. What's his, what's his name? Um, A.C. Lyle. Okay, thank you. A.C. Lyle. L-Y-L-E. Uh, okay, Lyle. thank you, sir. He's from... A.C. A.C. Lyle. Thank you, sir. Just if you identify yourself. Hi, everybody knows you. We all know it's AC Lyles. Uh, my name is AC Lyles, and I'm going to wear my picture right over the way here in Hollywood. And all of us turned out to be for Jim. And he's right here in Hollywood and Vine. And Jim Bacon is is as much the history of Hollywood as Hollywood and Vine. And all of us love you, Jim. The turnout you had today is extraordinary. And you have brightened up Hollywood for years, and now you're brightening up Hollywood and Vine. And most of the people, including me, that have stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame owe you a great debt of gratitude because it was through you that people recognize us and gave us the honor that you received today. Jim, we love you. And it's wonderful to, to, to be with you. And my arms are always around. Thank you, Jim.